morning, family. Who came ready to bless the Lord this morning? Oh, come on, who came ready to bless the Lord today? Oh, this is for you, King Jesus. We love you, we love you, we love you.
understand, when we worship and we shout and we praise, the Bible says that the enemy's camp gets confused. That the walls that were held against you not to fall down because God's power is able to press you through. Let me just say this. Come on. I don't know why I'm feeling this, Pastor Casey, this morning. But some of you guys believe the lies too much. You heard too much of the enemy speaking to your ear. But you have the power to push through because the power is in your mouth. Praise is in your mouth. Worship is in your mouth. His word is on your lips. Amen. Could you just do me something? I know this is so out of the normal. Just lift your hands for a second and say, Jesus. 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 You are here. Oh, come on. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. He's worthy of praise. Yes. Yes. I know this is just the first song, but let me tell you something. God is in the house and he's present. If you just draw close to him, he'll draw close to you. Just turn around real quick if you can. Just give somebody a high five. Welcome to church this morning. Just say, welcome to church. So glad you're here this morning. So blessed to have you. Man. We're going to go right back into worship in a few minutes. You may be seated. Man. God is good, amen? He is worthy of all praise and honor and adoration. I want to welcome all our first-time guests today. If you are here for the very first time, say welcome to City Light Church. Welcome to our family. We're so blessed to have you. If you are here for the very first time, let us know simply by clicking the QR code on the screen beside me or the seat pocket in front of you. If you're watching online, let us know. There's a tab there. Let us know where you're watching from. We're so glad you tuned in today. I believe this with all my heart. First time you are a guest. Second time you are family. Amen. So come on, family, give a hand clap for all of those that are here for the very first time in the building and watching online. Amen. All the brave ladies in the house, let me hear you. Men, you, you, you heard that, men, right? Just making sure you guys heard the ladies. We have our brave community nights. We don't want to miss that. That's March 10th. Everybody say March 10th. At 4 p.m., we have four locations throughout the Tampa Bay area. If you are a brave lady, we want you to come out, join us, be there, bring a friend. It's a great opportunity to, for community, to hang out, to fellowship, but most of all, be together as one family. Amen? All the men in the house, let me hear y'all. What do you think, Chris? Eh? All the men in the house, I want them to hear you got. Yeah. All right. That was a lot better. Men, we, we, we have something for you guys, too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm in a little giddy mood this morning. I don't know what it is. March 9th. Everybody say March 9th. East Lake Campus. We have men's breakfast at 830 East Lake Campus. Men, sign up. Let us know. It's a time we all get together. All the men come together and just celebrate, have a good time of fellowship, and just have some good food. But most of all, spend time with Jesus that day. And so those both events, register, let us know so we can be prepared for you as we are getting ready for those events. And I, I bet you you'll be blessed being there. Amen? Any cheerful givers in the house? Yeah. I just want to say thank you. Uh, we had a lot of great things happen the last couple of weeks. As you guys know, last week we had our missions our missions emphasis and man just to hear the testimonies and the registrations for those who want to go on a mission trip is just it's been amazing so I just want to encourage you if you if you don't know what that's all about get a part of that get outside your four walls of your life go outside in the mission field let God use you in a mighty way but I just want to say thank you for all those that did give into that and made that possible also for our students to go to Winterfest you'll hear more about that later but as they're traveling back from Tennessee our Wednesday nights, you guys gave towards that for the students who uh, may need some extra funds to make that possible. But uh, Generation Unite was a great night, too. I want to thank you guys for being there. We had a lot of great testimonies of families getting ministered to and just worship. What, what really ministered to me was watching this altar with moms and dads and brothers and sisters worshiping God together. That, that was that, that's what the kingdom of God is like. Amen? That's good news. Amen? Amen. But I just want to share about giving this morning. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12, I've read this before, but it, something just stuck out a little bit different this time. For it says, 
For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Did you catch that? God looks at, it's not the quantity, although quantity is good in our eyes as humans, right? God looks at the quality of your giving. I've heard this before said, it says that your heart regulates your hands. Think about that. Where your heart is, so goes your hands, so goes your treasure. When we're obedient to respond when God speaks, and our heart is bent towards God concerning what he's speaking, then God opens tremendous doors that there's no room to contain what you're believing God for. Let me just say it this way. Your time, your talent, your treasure, your gifts, your tithes, your offering, whatever it is, God doesn't care if it's two cents or a million dollars. All he wants to make sure he has your heart and your heart's in the right place. Amen. So when we give today, just know this. Whatever you have, whatever the Lord leads in your heart to give, be obedient and respond in what he says. Because on the other side of that obedience, he unlocks favor. He unlocks blessings. Because he knows if he can get it to you, he'll get it through you. Amen. So praise God for that. Give him a hand clap. That's also good news. Amen. We're going to pray. There's four ways to make that possible on the screen beside me. If you're watching online, there's a giving tab there also. Let us know. Let's pray over that offering today. Let's believe God for increase. Amen. Who's believing God for increase in the house? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you that we don't have to give. We get to give. It's a privilege and an honor to serve you with our time, our talent, our treasures, our tithes, our offering. Whether it's a designated giving, whether it is a tithe, Father, you will bless those who walk by faith in obedience to trust you at your word. So I pray, God, today that every need is met in this house for their home, for their families, for their business, for their ministry, for their marriage, for their children. Father God, as we're obedient, you unlock, you bless, you open favor and doors that no man can open except you, God. So bless the seed and the sower, the gift and the giver for what you're doing in their lives. We can't wait to see it come to pass. And we love and honor you. And everybody says, amen.
Come on, if you feel comfortable, just slide your hands up. Come on, that's the song of the redeemed. The angels declare holy. The redeemed declare worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. Father, we declare today that you're not only a holy God, but you are a worthy God. The only one worthy. So Father, I pray today, Father, that as the atmosphere has been set, an atmosphere that is ripe for miracles and breakthrough, Father, I pray over every need today. Come on, if you're in need of anything, just slide your hand up. Father, we declare in your presence there's freedom. In your presence there's liberty. In your presence there's breakthrough, Father. In your presence, Father, there's new seasons. So, Father, we pray right now a grace that is all sufficient. A mercy that's brand new every morning to invade every need, cover every place. Father, I just speak, Father, life. Life and healing and restoration. Life, healing, and restoration. And Father, I just pray, Father, that well beyond this room, giants that have tried to stand in families, giants that have tried to stand, Father, in the path of purpose and destiny, giants that have stood and loomed and intimidated. Father, well beyond this room, Father, we declare those giants are beginning to fall. Those giants are beginning to fall. But we declare he that the Son has set free is free indeed. Come on, would you take about 15 seconds? Come on, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Father, we pray your word would come alive today. It would speak, it would change, it would challenge. Father, I pray today, Father, we would leave this time together knowing, Father, we have been in your presence with your people, aligned with purpose. Father, let us be those that go before and prepare the way. Let us go before and prepare the way that the King of glory might come in. Father, I speak a yes and an amen over your people today. Come on, give him glory and praise today. Oh, you can be seated in his presence this morning. Good to see everybody this morning. What an atmosphere of worship. Wow, what an atmosphere that's been cultivated. I, I believe some of you brought a praise with you this morning. Some of you brought worship with you this morning. What a great day it's already been. Just left our East Lake campus and had a great morning there. And our 930 was beautiful here. We're starting a brand new series today called Prepare the Way. In just a few short weeks, we will celebrate Resurrection Week. Easter Sunday, it's the Super Bowl of Christianity. It's where Jesus thumped the devil on the head, said enough is enough. It's where he declared you have victory and power and that you are more than a conqueror. Aren't you glad that Jesus is alive today? Yeah. And when you understand that you have a great opportunity to change someone's eternity. You know, Easter is an easy day to invite people to church. Because even people far from God feel sometimes a responsibility to come to church on Resurrection Sunday. Invite someone, it may change the course of their destiny. We're going to have invites in a few weeks, and we want to challenge you to invite someone, your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers. It could be that you would be the bridge of eternity for somebody. How many would say in here, somebody reached me? Somebody shared the good news with me? Somebody shared the gospel with me? And we want to be those that show forth and share the gospel and prepare the way 
for the Messiah to work in someone else's life. And uh, I'm just believing that God's going to just bring many into his kingdom that day. You know, we have our, our students and our young adults that are traveling back. We've had a massive group up at Winterfest and over almost 11,000 students over the last two days meeting, worshiping, engaging the presence of God. And I'm telling you, God was just doing some amazing things and our students are coming back so we pray safety over them. We have a whole charter bus and vans coming back and staff members with them. And it was a great time. And me and Casey, Pastor Casey were up there and um, as we were coming back last night, we missed our connecting flight. So we got home about 1 a.m. and uh, finally, I mean, the airport was crazy, mad crazy. Everybody heading for spring break and stuff. And we finally got in this line with like 80 people, finally got up there. And she said, there's just a couple seats left. I was like, thank you, Lord, you know. And, um, but he got us here today. And then this morning I was up working on my sermon, wrapping up the, the loose ends, and my computer went out. I, I rebooted my computer and it restarted everything and lost my sermon. And so I just had to have the Spirit lead me, put it back on paper. So if it's good today, we'll say, thank you, Lord. If it's bad, you can blame it on the computer. And, uh, and, um, and so, you know, I think that uh, as the Spirit leads us, it's funny today because we're going to talk about Spirit-empowered life and being led by the Spirit. You know, in the book of Isaiah chapter 11, there was a prophecy given that one would come out of the wilderness and declare the way, would prepare the way, would make straight the way and clear the path for the Messiah. And we find in the New Testament, John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, earthly cousin, rises, and he's different, so people thought he might be the Messiah. He was given to a priest, and we find that he wore different clothes. He wore animal skins as his clothing, not the proper robe of a rabbi. He ate a different diet, locust and wild honey. Sounds good, doesn't it? People thought he might be the Messiah, but John said, I'm not the one. I am not the way, but I have come to prepare the way. I have come to declare the way. And then Jesus would arrive. In the book of John, John the Baptist would see Jesus coming. He said, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Prophetically declaring that Jesus was the Messiah. He would baptize Jesus in the Jordan. The heavens would open. The Father would speak and declare, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And miracles would begin to break out. And Jesus would declare, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And what he's called us to, as he did John the Baptist, he's called us to prepare the way. Not only the way for you and I. See, there's two things. First of all, there's me. And then there's we. But sometimes I want we to be good before me is good. And if I can ever take care of me, usually the we works out. Because I find sometimes I'm the weak link in the we. Don't look at me like that. Sometimes I'm the weak link in the, in the we. But if I ever get the me corrected and my vertical relationship is right, I'm telling you, because God puts me in the right we. He puts me in the right grouping. Because I'm telling you, if, if I'm right with God, he'll remove me from the wrong places. Because there's some people, I've told you before, you know, they're, they're not bad people. They're just not good for you. And you're probably not good for them. Because your weaknesses and their weaknesses aren't compatible. And when your weaknesses get with their weaknesses, they take you to weak places. Because there's some people you need to love from afar. Some you probably need to cut out of your social media. Because they're just not good for you. But when I get the me right, the we works. And as I find that Jesus is talking to a group of disciples, and he's talking to them individually, but he's also talking about the we, the group. And in Acts chapter 2, something happens with this group of weak, anemic Disciples that had all kinds of issues, insecurities, frailers, fears, attitudes, broken perspectives, jealousy. And something happens in Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly, I love suddenlies of the kingdom. We're in a moment God moves in and changes things. Anybody believe it for a suddenly in your life? I'm believing that for you, that in this next season, there's a suddenly in your life, in your family, in your finances, in your health. 
And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Here's what happens. They're at the right place. There's something about being at the right place. They're at the right time. And then the Bible said there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. What was that wind? It was the same wind we saw in Genesis chapter 2 where the father picked up a lump of dirt and the more he worked with the dirt, the more the dirt looked like him. The Bible said the dirt revealed his image. And when it looked like him, he breathed on it. I find anything that looks like the father, he breathes on. I'm so glad he still puts his hands on dirt. I'm so glad he's willing to put his hands on my dirt, on the places I don't, I don't want anybody else to touch or know about. He's still willing to put his hands on the dirt of my life. And the minute he works with that dirt, it reveals his image and he breathes on it. It was that same breath that we find in, in Exodus where Moses was at a Red Sea and he stretched out his staff and God breathed on waters and they marched across into promise. It was that same breath in Chronicles where the Bible said David was in battle once again fighting the Philistine. You ever felt like you were fighting the same battles over and over and and over the same giants over and over once again David is at war with the Philistine and the Bible said God began to change the strategy he said David reposition yourself sometimes just a little repositioning helps he said just reposition yourself and all of a sudden David heard the rippling of the wind and the top of the mulberry trees and he knew that God had arrived and the Bible said he defeated his enemy from one city to the next and the name of David was made famous in all of the land it was that same breath in Ezekiel chapter 37 where there was a valley of dead dry bones and all of a sudden through a word of prophecy a breath began to blow through that valley and bone began to come together and an army began to rise up in that valley of dead things it was that same breath in John chapter 3 where Jesus said you can't put it in a box you can't tell it where to go but if you will follow it it will lead you into all revelation it was that same breath in Acts chapter uh, John chapter 20 where Jesus walked right through a wall and he found this group of broken disciples and the Bible said he breathed on them and said receive the Holy Spirit, but it was that, say that same breath in Acts chapter 2. What was that breath? It was the Ruach breath of God. It was that God breath that brings life and creativity, that breath that restores and heals. And the Bible said there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house. Now listen, I love corporate worship. I love being in the presence of other believers. Your singing blesses me. I'm sure my singing does not bless you. I mean, I'm good when I'm by myself. I mean, I'm on pitch. It's when I get around you, something happens. I mean, I'm like ready for, you know. But there's something about being together. I love when God fills the house. I love when I walked in this morning and God filled the house with his presence. But how many know just a corporate presence is not enough? Listen, because sometimes all we do is set up for a corporate presence on Sundays but we have no power on Monday. But here's what the Bible said. It filled the whole house. Then, cloven tongues as of fire. When you walk into this room in God's presence, what well, you need to say, Lord, let me take it with me. Let me take it home. Let me take it to work tomorrow. Let me take it to school tomorrow. Let me take it into the fight of faith. Let me take it to where I'm going into my next week. The Bible said it rested on each of them, and they begin to speak in a prayer language. They begin to declare in boldness. I'm telling you, something happened that day. It was so powerful that God used, began to use ordinary men to do supernatural things. My prayer is, is as God fills the house with his presence, you leave with that presence. You become a carrier of that presence. You leave with an empowerment. And you go to wherever God has assigned you and the purpose of your life is revealed. He took ordinary men and he began to empower them. Here's what I, I know. That unless I live a spirit-empowered life, I'll never walk out God's plan and purpose for my life. Somebody said, Pastor, do you need the Holy Spirit to make it to heaven? You need the Holy Spirit to go to the mall. I mean, it's crazy out there. I mean, you know, you need it to get out of here on Del Mabry. I need him to raise a family. I need him for my marriage. I need him in my finances. I need him to direct my daily path. I need him to speak to me. I need him to encourage me when I'm down and strengthen me and settle me when I'm in a season of blessing. You need the Holy Spirit. You need to live a spirit-empowered life. He was telling these disciples, without me, you can do 
nothing. But in my spirit, you all get keys to a kingdom. Matter of fact, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I'm giving you the authority of a kingdom to operate here on earth. We need to live a spirit-empowered life. That's why Acts 1 and 8, he gives them a glimpse of it. He gives them a glimpse of Acts chapter 2. He said, you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. He said when you receive this power, it's going to activate something in you, a gifting and a purpose. And I'm, I'm going to work with you. I'm going to start where you're at. How many of you know he always starts where we're at? He doesn't start you at the end of the story. I'm thankful for that, that he starts me where I'm at. He said I'm going to start you in Jerusalem. Then I'm going to take you out a little further to Judea. He stretches me a little. He said, then I'm really going to stretch you. I'm going to take you to Samaria because I know you don't like the Samaritans. They don't look like you. They don't act like you. They have different culture. But I'm going to take you. I'm going to stretch you. And then after I stretch you, I'm going to send you around the world with this good news. He said, I'm going to start where you're at. The good news of the gospel is here's how grace works. It starts where you're at. I'm telling you, it starts right where you're at. In your broken state, it starts. In your messed up yesterday, it starts. In your jacked up perspective of how you see things, he starts right there. In every insecurity, he said, I'm going to start right there. I'm going to start in your Jerusalem, and I'm going to give you power, and then I'm going to keep stretching you and stretching you and stretching you until your purpose is extended. And that's what the Spirit-empowered life does. It allows you to walk in the power of God's Spirit. But I don't need to just be Spirit-empowered. I need to be Spirit-fed. Because what goes in comes out. What I feast upon is reproduced in my life. If I'm only on social media and I'm feasting on what everybody else has to say but never hearing what he has to say, I, be, I find my worth shaped in that. But over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about grounding ourselves in some principles that allow us to walk out the journey of the Father and being empowered by His Spirit and be those that prepare the way, not only for the goodness of God on earth, but the coming of the King. And when you understand there are some things that allow you to feast upon His presence, first of all, the Word. How do you know this book has more to say than Facebook? <laughs> and this book right here brings life every time. So I get in this book. And it begins to build me. The Bible said it becomes a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. It says when I hide it in my heart that I would not sin against God. It doesn't mean I'll never sin. I'll never stumble. But I'll tell you what happens when I fall. It picks me back up. When I'm out, it brings me back in. When I'm down, it encourages my spirit. It always is declaring my best is yet to come. It is always declaring that greatness is before me. It always declares that he covers my yesterday and he directs my tomorrow. This word right here. But not only am I a person of the word, but I become a person of worship. I'm telling you, God loves to inhabit your personal worship. We're going to talk about that in the next few weeks. You don't have to sing great. I'm not a great singer, but I love to sing. But there's something about when I just say, Lord, you're a good God. If it had not been for you in my life, there's something when I'm not in a room like this and I don't have a, a stage full of worshipers and a musician and I just rise up and say, Lord, I know you're directing my step. I know you love me and I love you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for restoring me. Thank you for anointing me. Thank you for crowning me with righteousness. Thank you for keeping me when I thought I was going to lose it. Thank you, Father, when I thought I was going to throw in the towel. You simply declare, no, your best is yet to come. Thank you, Father, that you're a good God, thank you that you're my healer and my restorer. Thank you that you are the king of all glory. Something happens. I'm challenging you. Take a few minutes. You don't have to set hours aside. Start with a couple minutes in the morning. Tell him who he is to you. Not, not by some psalmist that wrote a song to God. Because I told you it was something how David talked to God about God. And God started talking to Samuel about David. Sometimes you talk to God about God, he'll talk to the right people. He'll talk to the right places. Then we're going to talk about prayer, your bold prayers, how your effective prayers establish you in kingdom alignment. So I Joshua 1.8, just before they're getting ready to go in and take it all, waiting for it for 40 years, Joshua 1.8, it says this, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day 
and night, day and night, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then, somebody say then, for then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Matter of fact, everywhere you put your foot down, everything you lay hold of, everything that I told you 40 years ago about, everything I spoke to Moses, everything I've declared, he said it's going to be yours. But here's how you get there. You get there directed by the word, by the law. You get there aligned with the principles of the kingdom. And that's where I become spirit led. Not just spirit fed, but I become spirit led. Because if I feast on the things of the word long enough and I feast upon the things of the spirit, I move from being spirit fed to being spirit led and I want you know God wants to lead you he wants to guide you he wants to take you from glory to glory he wants to move you from season to season he wants you to rise up and walk in the authority of the kingdom and when I am spirit fed I begin to walk spirit led and when I am spirit led something happens in my life come help me Richard you know there's a story in Mark chapter 8 but as you before I go there that's why Romans chapter 8 verse, verse 14 says this for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Children know they have an inheritance. And they're connected to the Father. You know, in Mark chapter 8, there's a story of a blind man. And I've preached on this blind man before, but I was reading it this week, and some of those principles that we're talking about jumped out at me. There's this blind man. Now, this blind man is living in a place called Bethsaida. Bethsaida had been cut off from blessing. Matter of fact, Jesus said, most of my mighty works were done in you but you gave nothing back. I'm telling you, there's something about giving back and not just receiving. Because if you, all you do is receive, you become stagnant. And if all you are is a reservoir of blessing and not a conduit of blessing, you are not living a healthy life and a matured life. But he said, all you've done is receive, so he cut him off. But there's a blind man in this city that has a heart for God and he longs for the Spirit. And the Bible said he begged Jesus to come and touch him. Jesus walked right into that dark place. And the Bible said he did something. He touched this blind man. And I love that story. Jesus walked into this dark region and touched this blind man. And then the Bible said he took him by the hand and began to lead him. Here, here's the problem. Sometimes we receive a touch on Sunday, but we're never led on Monday. And we receive a touch in our dysfunction, but we stay in our dysfunction. We, we, we receive a touch in our brokenness, but we remain in our brokenness. We, we receive a touch in that place that is fragmented, but we stay there. But Jesus takes him by the hand after he touches him, and they begin to journey together. And the Bible said they begin to walk together. Now watch, now listen, for this blind man, familiarity is everything. If you're blind, your surroundings are everything to you. Because you can't see, you have to know. So for him to be willing to be led by the Spirit, he is going to have to leave the familiar. Now listen, sometimes in our journey, being led by the Spirit, we have to make a choice. Are we willing to leave the familiar? And the Bible said they begin to walk. And they leave the town, and the Bible said Jesus stops and he does something. He picks up dirt, spits in the dirt, makes a mud pie, it's so crazy. Even the disciples are thinking, what is he doing? And he wipes it on the man's eyes. Sometimes being led by the Spirit, we have to allow him to use methods and means in our life that are out of the ordinary. We said, I'll take the foolish to confound the wise. I'll do things in your life that only you'll see and be revealed later. He picks up dirt, spits on it, and he wipes it on the man's eyes. The guy opens his eyes, and he begins to see. Man, he's good. I'm telling you. One of the best I've ever worked with. He's got a little bit of diva in him now. I had to tone him down at East Lake. Got a little diva in him. Tried to take my sermon over. No, he didn't. I'm, I'm joking. He didn't. I'm joking. He did. But, it, but he begins to see. And Jesus asked a question. He said, how do you see? He said, I see men as trees walking. Read it in Mark chapter 8. Beautiful story. Now watch. I believe when Jesus touched him, he had 20-20 vision. Because anything Jesus touches made whole. But remember, he's been blind. He doesn't understand what he sees. And the Bible said Jesus touched him again. And the Bible said he saw every man clearly. That word clearly means in revelation form. He now understands what he sees. But here's the next declaration to him. Do not go back into the town. Or even talk to him. He said, matter of fact, if you go back, you'll be as blind as when you came out. 
He said, here's what the Spirit does. It leads you to places that bring wholeness in your life. So when you come out the other side, you see things you've never seen. You hear things you've never heard. You go to where you've never been. Here's what I'm believing. As God begins to lead you, He's not only going to touch you, but He's getting ready to lead you out so He can lead you in. I'm praying this next season for your life, the Holy Spirit leads you to places you have never been. The Holy, you're good. Yeah, give Richard a hand. Yeah. He leads you to places you have never been. He just wants to stay up here with me. Here's what happens. He begins to lead you, but here's my prayer. He said, do not go back to the town or talk to anyone in the town. He said, because if you do, you'll be as blind as when you came out. My fear is this. We are not led by the Spirit. We are just touched by the Spirit. And if all we are is touched by the Spirit, we never get to new places. But when we put our hand in his, his hand and say, Lord, lead me to where I've never been. It may not be comfortable. I may not know where I'm going, but I do know I have hold of the hand of God. I have hold of the hand of the Spirit. So where are you lead me I am willing to follow I'm telling you tomorrow put your hand in his hand and he will lead you to places you have never been he will lead you out of the valley to the mountain he will lead you to a place and develop a new song he said I want you to be spirit led because here it is if you're spirit led you'll be spirit marked you'll be spirit marked the whole book of Acts is just a testimony of the acts God did in the apostles life they're filled with the spirit this man that could say nothing right. I'm telling you, if we were having a big church service, I'm telling you, the guy I picked would not be the guy that every time he opened his mouth said the wrong thing. Nope, not him. He talks about everybody. Not him. I've heard him curse a time or two. Not him. You know, he can slip up with the tongue. He even denied he knew Jesus. But this broken man named Peter, Jesus uses him, and the Spirit uses him to be the mouthpiece at Pentecost. Here's what the Spirit does. It takes weaknesses of your life and makes them trophies for the kingdom. 3,000 people the first day, first service, saved. That's what the Spirit does. It flips the script. What the enemy tried to use for evil to take you out, God allows it now to be a platform for your life. What the enemy tried to do to steal your joy, now it's a weapon in your arsenal. It becomes a song in the night. It becomes a testimony in your journey. And you rise up and you look back and say, oh, even in the valley of the shadow of death, I found out I was anointed. I was appointed. I found out I had purpose. I found out I had a prophetic voice. And I want you to know, God wants to mark you by his spirit he wants you to be a sign that makes people wonder in the earth that they look at you and said man if it had not been for God on their side man they should have given up they should have thrown in the towel but look at them now I can see they're the head and not the tail I can see they're the first and not the last I see God marking them with a miracle and I'll tell you what God wants to do as you are led by the spirit and you begin to prepare the way for the kingdom of God to come in the earth he wants you to be a living miracle he wants to mark you because you are led by a spirit you are feeding upon the spirit and you have been raised up by the spirit and you are being launched out by the spirit and you're going to be used of the spirit and when you realize that God desires to use you we're not going to go there for lack of time but in Acts chapter 3 go there verse 1 the Bible said Peter and John together look at your neighbor and say I need you God has never called you to journey by yourself matter of fact there are no lone rangers in the kingdom You'll never accomplish your purpose by yourself. You need somebody in your life. You say, well, I'm pastor, I'm a self-made man. I don't believe that. I'm a self-made woman. You may have worked hard, but somewhere in your journey, not only did someone else come alongside, the father did. And he put his hand on you. This is what happens. The Bible said together they went to prayer. Here's the deal. They went there every day. They were just, they were good Jewish brothers. They went to prayer every day. But this day, now they're marked. One chapter from Acts chapter 2, they're marked. They're led. They've been transformed. They've been empowered. And in their Jerusalem, they're on their way to church. But on their way to church, they decide to become the church. The Bible said, every day a man was carried by his friends and laid at a gate. This gate was so beautiful, they called it the gate beautiful. But here's the reality, he had an ugly problem. He could get to the gate, but not through the gate. People could only carry him so far. People will only get you so far. There are some things only the Spirit of God can do. 
It doesn't matter the best counselor you have, and we love our counselors, but there's only some things they can counsel you through. There's only some things doctors can heal. There's only some things that people can put back together. But I'm telling you, there's something about the Spirit of God in your life, the anointing in your life. The Bible said he got to the gate but could not get through the gate. And these two men, now marked by the presence of God, they stop. They look at him, and then they say, look on us. I don't believe they were saying, look at us. Hey, <laughs> we got the power. No, I believe what they were saying was, look at us. We were stuck just like you. There was a time I could get to the gate but not through the gate. There was a time we were messed up. Matter of fact, I even died and I knew Jesus. Look at us. And they said this, silver and gold have we none. I don't believe they were saying we're broke. I believe what they were saying was this. We're not going to put a shekel in your cup. Because if I put a shekel in your cup, you'll be here tomorrow. Sometimes the church does that. Sometimes we do that. We just want a band-aid. And he said, but I've got deliverance. We just want a band-aid. He said, but I've got victory. He said, we, we just want a band-aid. But he said, I've got freedom. He said, we're not going to put a shekel in your cup because if we do, you'll be here tomorrow. But such as we have, look at us. We're living testimony. We're being led by his spirit. We were in an upper room. We were broke. We were weak. But all of a sudden, the wind began to captivate the room. And a wind began to blow through the corridor of that room. And the atmosphere began to shift. And all of a sudden, it began to rest on us. And here we are today, walking in the power of his spirit, being led by his spirit. And such as we have, we give to you and they reached out their hand and they took him by the hand and the Bible said they began to lift him up and here's what happened. The Bible said strength began to come into his ankles. Strength began to come to that weak place that kept him stuck at a gate. Strength began to come to that place that kept him outside the gate. That ugly problem he had began to be overtaken by the Spirit of God. They said such as we have we give unto thee in the name, the name of the Spirit. In the name that is above every name. The name that has marked us the name that has called us the name that has destined us in the name of Jesus rise and walk and the Bible says strength began to come into his ankles and he began to leap to his feet and he moved from being stuck to leaping I've, I've come to prophesy to somebody you're about to leap into a new season you're about to leap into a new place you're about to leap into that place that God has declared for you you've been stuck long enough rise up you've been stuck long enough rise up you've been bound long enough rise up. You've been at that place dormant long enough. Rise up. God's about to take you in. And he didn't just start leaping. He started leaping with a new song. He started leaping with a praise and a declaration. He started leaping declaring he that the son is set free is free indeed. Matter of fact, I'm going to get the team to come be ready to lead us. Maybe you're ready to leap into a new season. I didn't do this in any of the other services, but I felt to do it here. Maybe you're ready to leap into a new season. Maybe you're stuck at the gate and the Spirit is getting ready to leave you. But like that blind man, you've got to make up your mind. Are you willing to leave the familiar? Are you willing to leave some things that have kept you? Are you willing to let him use methods in your life? If he has to pick up dirt, spit in that dirt and wipe them on your eyes, say, Lord, whatever you have to do, I'm ready. Whatever you have to do, I'm ready. And then willing to wave goodbye to that broken place. Because I'm telling you, dysfunction likes to call you back. Depression likes to call you back. Heaviness likes to call you back. Generational curses like to pull you back. Those things that have been so comfortable for so long that you know so well that have become now identity in your life. They become comfortable. He said, do not go back. And the Bible said from that point on, he followed Jesus down the road. Somebody's about to walk where they've never been. But as they begin to lead us in worship, I want you to get out. If you're ready to leap into a new season, I'm telling you, some shackles are going to fall off today. Some songs are going to burp today. Some declarations are going to break out today. But if that's you, it may not be for everybody. If you're at church online, right where you're at, come on, just begin to worship. But if that is you and you're in this room, I want you to quickly get out from where you're at. Come stand down here with me. As you come, what you're doing in your spirit, and I'm going, I'm leaping, I'm singing, I'm declaring, I'm ready. I'm walking. I'm moving. Holy Spirit, come, come on, you come, just lift your hands. You're all
tell him you're all we want. You're all. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all. pray over you just before Pastor Jason comes. Just slide your hands up. Just slide your hands up. Father, I bless you right now. Come on, just like you're taking him by the hand and you're saying, Lord, I put my hand in your hand. I put my hand in your hand. I'm putting my hand in your hand. I'm putting my hand in your hand, Father. And I'm believing you're leading me to new places. You're leading me, Father, not just to the gate, but through the gate. Well, somebody's getting up right now. That place you've been stuck, you're getting up. That place that has tried to keep you, you're getting up. That place that's tried to speak defeat to you, you're rising up. That place that has tried to tell you there's no future, not only are you rising, but you're getting ready to prepare the way of the King. You're getting ready to declare His glory. So, Father, I speak right now. I declare, Father, we are rising. We're rising out of the shame. We're rising out of the mire. We're rising out, Father, of that place that we have been stuck. And strength is coming in. Strength is coming in. Strength is coming in. So, Father, we rise with a testimony. We rise with a declaration. We rise in freedom. We rise with joy. We rise in strength. We rise, Father, with renewed vision. And Father, you're going to allow a worship to break out of our life. You're going to allow a prayer, Father, cry and a, a warring spirit to be developed. And we're going to put our future on notice that we are walking in faith. We are coming in authority and we are being empowered and led by the Spirit. So Father, we declare, Father, to a next season and a greater season and a blessed season. Father, we are on our way. Come on, somebody put your future on notice. You're on your way. Somebody put your tomorrow on notice. I'm coming with my family. I'm coming with a renewed marriage. I'm coming with a whole body. I'm coming with the right mind. I'm coming in authority. I'm coming with a shout. I'm coming with a song. I'm coming with a declaration. I'm coming declaring if God be for me, who are 
one can be against me. Come on, somebody give him a yes and amen today. Come on, a yes and amen today. Come on, testify of his goodness. Somebody needs to wave goodbye to where you've been. Somebody needs to wave goodbye to where you've been. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm not going there. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Matter of fact, some of you need to do that by faith right now. I'm waving by to depression. I'm waving by to that heaviness. I'm waving by to sickness. So, Father, I speak over your people, life and strength. A victory of declaration, Father. That it's a new season and a new day. We're rising up, Father, with the word, preparing the way of the King. Come on, one more time as Pastor Jason comes. Put your hands together. Come on, tell him he's worthy today. We're just good means just standing where you're at for a minute before we get dismissed. We want to give the opportunity for everybody in this room. Maybe you are here today, and maybe you're at the front, or maybe you're sitting at your seat or watching online. This is a great opportunity to invite Jesus to our life. Part of preparing the way is inviting him in. The Bible said when he went to the cross, he thought of you and I. When he went to that cross, he knew what he was doing for us. Something Pastor Casey said prophetically this morning as she was worshiping. She said these three words, God sees you, God hears you, and God knows you. He sees where you're at. He hears what you're going through. He hears your cra- cries. He hears your prayers. But he knows where you're at and he knows how to take you to the place that he has for you. So this morning, if you don't mind, just close your eyes for a second. Just lift your hands to heaven. I want to also say this prayer as one big body, one big family. Well, you said it for the first time, the million time. It doesn't matter. God hears you today. Just say this. Say, Jesus, I invite you in my life. You see where I'm at. You hear my cries. You have something good for me. You know where I'm going. So today, I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me, to wash me clean. A new beginning, a new start. Today, I am forgiven. You went to the cross. You paid for my sins so I can be free. You prepared the way so I could receive eternal life. So, Father, I thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. I am forgiven. I am healed. I am made new. Today's a new beginning. And I thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, come on, give him the highest praise. He's worth it. Yeah. Woo. This is what I love about inviting Jesus in because the Bible says this, especially for those who've said this for the very first time. There's nothing much greater than something that can take you out of darkness except the power of God into his marvelous light. It's a big miracle. Amen? Aren't you glad for that? So if you did this for the very first time, I want to say welcome to the family. There's a QR code. If you're watching online, let us know. We want to resource you, give a Devo to help you on your journey, but also to pray for you. Pray for you on your journey. I believe this is the beginning of great things that God wants to do in you and through you. Amen? So if you have said this, let us know who you are. We want to pray for y'all. Also, don't do life alone. We call next steps. Next step is this. You have a church family, but then you get to know your church family through connect groups, serving. Amen? Giving, not just your money, just giving your time and talent. Allowing God to operate and work through you. Pastor said something today. He didn't want you to be a reservoir just for yourself. He wants to be a conduit that God can flow through and use you. Amen? So I encourage you, if you're not get connected, get connected. You want to serve, get connected to serve here. But I believe with all my heart, and I'm a little biased. This is an awesome church, but it's also an awesome family. Amen? Come on, family. Give a hand clap for all those. We're going to go right back into worship. I just want to say, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace throughout your journey today. Be led by the Spirit of God. Listen to the Spirit of God and watch God do great and mighty exploits through you. God bless you guys. Go with God and God goes with you. Be the city. We're going to go back into worship. God bless.